Okay, welcome back to our um, to the continuing series of spinal tracks. And so today we're still going to go and talk about an ascending spinal tract and um, ascending spinal tract. And this time, what we're going to go through is this tract called the spinothalamic tract. This time, what we're going to go through is just quickly, once again, if this is a spinal cord segment, the spinal thalamic tract is located here. Okay, so that's the spinal thalamic tract region. And so I'm, what I was trying to say was in the last episode, we've gone through pretty much what is a primary neuron, secondary neuron, tertiary neuron, and those are what, um, those, are, those are the three neurons that make up the transmission signal from an ascending spinal tract. And we also went through what ipsilateral and contralateral and decussation means. So same thing applies into these episodes. And if you're not too sure, go back to the, um, feel free to go back to the last episode and have a look. But now the question is, what does the spinal thalamic tract contain? What information does it bring to the brain? Pain, temperature, coarse touch, and also pressure. So these are the sensory informations that are brought up through the spinal thalamic tract. And the reason why it's important to know all this is just so that if you know whereabouts these information are contained, if you notice that a patient is lacking in these sensations, you can probably more accurately say which particular region of the spinal cord maybe is, is, is possibly damaged. Now we're going to go into it. Once again, we've got a cervical uh, uh, spinal cord as well as a lumbar spinal cord over here. Okay, we're going to start off with the primary neuron and it brings these pain, temperature, coarse touch and pressure sensations into the spinal cord. And different to the dorsal column, these guys sign up straight away. So these guys are ipsilateral neurons, which they stay on the same side. They sign up straight away. And what happens is the secondary neuron comes over here, crosses at this region called the ventral white commissure, and bam, goes up. So crosses, bam, heads up. So the two travel together, and we're going to go up now into the medulla. So whereabouts do they go in the medulla? And they follow this tract called the spinal lemniscus. And we went through these little projections over here, they're called the medial lemniscus, whereas with the spinal thalamic tract, they go up this thing called the spinal lemniscus. It runs really close to the medial lemniscus, but not quite. So, it goes up and over here. So you see these are further back. Because this front part is still the medial lemniscus in the midbrain, and the spinal lemniscus is the one at the back. Okay, so they come up and they fuse. Where is this? This is same place as the dorsal column, thank god. So it's still the same nucleus, so it's the uh, ventral posterior nucleus of the thalamus and the legs come here and the arms come here. So upper limb, and this is lower limb, legs. Okay, and so once again, this is still the somatosensory cortex. And there you go. That's the spinal thalamic column. So just a quick recap, just as a summary. So we've got primary, interneuron, primary neurons bringing sensation to the dorsal column. They're ipsilateral. And then they synapse with the secondary neurons, which decussate at the ventral white ramus and ascend contralaterally through the spinal thalamic tract up until the medulla. In the medulla, they ascend in the spinal lemniscus, through the pons, through the midbrain, and then synapse at the cranial hemispheres in the ventral posterior nucleus of the thalamus. And then what happens is that they synapse with tertiary neurons in the thalamus and reach the somatosensory cortex 
in the parietal lobe. These tertiary neurons ascend in a ipsilateral direction. So yeah, that's that. Uh, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and also stay tuned for more tracks coming up.